So today we're talking about buckling restrain braced frames. Our objectives are to, first of all, review the principles of ductile design and how they apply to this system. Then to understand some of the practical considerations in the design of the buckling restrain braced frame system. And then to uh, review and understand the appropriate applications for this system and for the braces. So we'll talk about, uh, we'll, uh, we'll introduce the system, talking about uh, applications, then we'll uh, have more general discussion of ductile design in steel structures. We'll talk about the buckling restrained braces, and then the design of buckling restrained braced frames. We'll go on to specification and coordination with the manufacturers, some special uses, and a few comments on nonlinear analysis of buckling restrained braced frame structures. So uh, buckling restrained braces in the last uh, 15 years or so have become a, a, common, uh, a common system to be employed in a lot of different types of structures. Especially in low rise concentrically braced frames, they offer a lot of advantages over the systems that were very uh, popular or continue to be somewhat popular. For, uh, for that application, such as special concentrically braced frames. Uh, buckling restrained braces can also be very strong uh, and thus uh, have found a lot of applications in large buildings with very large brace forces. Uh, that could be uh, buildings that have a lot of mass, it can be buildings that are uh, somewhat tall. Uh, and uh, over the years, manufacturers have developed and tested larger and larger braces. And so the, the reach of this system has extended quite a lot. Buckling restrained braces uh, have been used also in some retrofit applications. Uh, buckling restrained braces are not the, uh, are not the stiffest of uh, lateral load resisting systems, so they're not appropriate for every retrofit application. But for buildings that do have some displacement capacity, uh, but nevertheless need additional resistance, uh, buckling restrained braces can be, uh, can be an effective retrofit solution. Uh, buckling restrained braces find a lot of use in applications that uh, special concentrically braced frames are considered for. Uh, you can consider buckling restrained braced frames virtually any time that a special concentrically braced frame is used. Uh, compared to special concentrically braced frames, buckling restrained braces uh, will provide excellent ductility. Uh, they will provide for lower design base shear, partly because the R factor given to this system uh, is a little bit higher, but also because the buckling restrained braced frame system is a little bit more flexible. Uh, and therefore uh, has a longer period. And uh, if you look at the response spectrum, it will be lower on that response spectrum. Uh, and because the, uh, because the forces are reduced, the connection and foundation design uh, costs for the system are reduced. And so that can be uh, something that tips the scales in favor of buckling restrained braces compared to special concentrically braced frames. Uh, in a lot of, uh, seismic design category B and C structures, uh, an R equals three braced frame is considered. Um, buckling restrained braced frames can be very economical compared to an R equals three design for many of these same reasons. The reduced base shear, the reduced connection design, or the reduced connection force, uh, and the reduced foundation forces. Here is a comparison of uh, uh, special concentrically braced frames and buckling restrained braced frames, just looking at the shape of the spectrum, uh, reducing by the R factor, the special concentrically braced frame gets an R of six, and so is uh, fairly substantially reduced compared to the elastic, uh, the elastic spectrum. The buckling restrained braced frame gets an R of eight. So, that's, uh, depending on how you look at it, you could consider that to be a 25% reduction. But very importantly, uh, even looking, uh, simplistically looking at the approximate period that you would get from ASE 7 using the factor C sub X times the, uh, times the height to, uh, uh, to the power 0.75, uh, you get a significant uh, extension in the period 
which in certain zones of the uh, response spectrum can result in a very large uh, reduction in the design base shear.